Welcome to worship. Welcome to Martin Luther Lutheran Church. We are glad you're here. I'm Pastor Hans, and today is the day that we remember all the saints. This is All Saints Sunday. This is the day. So November 1st is All Saints Day. It is the precursor for the All Hallows Eve, the Halloween, the tradition came from. And on All Saints Day, we remember all the saints, and many of them who are not named, who are not listed, who don't have the title of saint. As Lutherans, we believe in saint and sinner, so we celebrate the family and friends and loved ones who've gone before us, who are now in heaven, who are in the communion of saints up in heaven, rejoicing, celebrating with us, and communion with us through communion. So today we will have communion at the end of service, so if you want to, you can get those communion elements ready for this All Saints Sunday. Let's join together as the people of God, the saints of God, redeemed by the cross. Let's join together for worship now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, we have been saved. All of our sins are forgiven by God Almighty in the name of God the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Share that peace right now with somebody in any way you can. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, our eternal Redeemer, by the presence of your Spirit, you renew and direct our hearts. Inspire us for a holy life here, and bring us to the joy of resurrection with all the great saints that went before us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. What's the
Bum bum. Hi, I'm Pastor Hans. I'm Pastor Hans. Oh, yeah, show us your smile. You're missing some teeth. I'm missing. Teeth. Did you did you get something from the tooth fairy? I got money. <gasps> oh, oh, that's amazing. Okay, hey, I put something in here. I'm gonna open something these. that I like. I'm gonna... Any guesses, are you? No. What's it? It's something light. Like... I knew it. It was something light. Like... What is this? I knew it was a hat. What kind of hat? It's not just any hat. Royal. No. What's that say? Detroit. This is my Detroit Tigers hat. Hey, so I am wearing a hat that's not the Royals. Do you think when I go to the Royals baseball game, people are going to be happy about that? No. No. When I go to the Royals game, I'm not very popular when I wear this when they're playing the Tigers. So when I go to the baseball game, I see a few other Tigers fans. I say, hey, go Tigers. And guess what my friends think? What? Oh, that guy. He's a Tigers fan. And I kind of annoy my friends, huh? Because they're all Royals fans, but I'm a Tigers fan. So, Aria, there's in-groups, and there's people who feel outside. When I go to a Royals game, I have my Tigers hat on, they're playing the Tigers. I don't feel like I'm part of the in-group, do I? People aren't happy to see me when I wear my Tigers hat. It, that is the smile of a Tiger, right? So, Aria, hey, are you a Royals fan or a Tigers fan? Tiger. Really? You just saying that because I'm your dad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's okay. I became a Tigers fan because of my parents and grandparents. But that's all right. And you can be any fan you want. But what about Jesus? Does Jesus want us to love everyone even if they're not a Royals fan? Even if they're not a Tigers fan? Do we still love them? Jesus says love. Everyone. Oh, even if they are a... Tigers fan. Yeah. That's good. So Sometimes I, Because my eyes are blurry right now. Right. Okay. So... <laughs> All right, Jesus tells us to love everyone, even those who don't belong or feel like they are on the outside. We need to love them too, right? So, let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for being fucking. Thank you for everything. Thank you for, for God. Thank you for God. Thank you for family. Thank you for the world. Thank you for making us part of your church family. Thank you. Thank you. For life. Thank you, brother. Sometimes we feel like we don't belong. Sometimes we feel like we don't belong here. But we know. But we know everything. We belong to you, God. <laughs> we belong to you, God. And we love everyone. And we love everyone in Jesus' name we pray. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye. No. Bum, bum. Today's first reading is from Philemon, verses 4 to 7. I thank my God always when I mention you in my prayers because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray the partnership of your faith may become effective as you comprehend all the good that we share in Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make God's face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May the Lord continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere God. Our second reading comes from Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 41. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, 
Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to His name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We love a winner in America. We are driven to lift up those who succeed, to cheer for the teams that are winning, to be excited for when our team finally wins. Now I can say there are definitely bandwagon fans out there. There are people who jump on, get excited, who start buying the gear, do all these things once the team starts doing well. I will say though, I think the Chiefs here in Kansas City have always had a very strong fan base. You see there are people have season tickets for many years, decades, and they, even though they're through losing seasons, they still maintain that fan base. The Chiefs have that huge draw for people in good or bad. But I will tell you, of course, when the Chiefs are really good like they are now, they're one of the best teams in the NFL, there are a lot of Chiefs fans. I will admit, maybe I'm considered a bad fan because I really enjoy watching the Chiefs play. I like watching Patrick Mahomes. I like what they do. I enjoy seeing their games. It's exciting. Even if they don't win, it's going to be exciting football. And so the bandwagon theme is a strong pull for many people. We want to be on the winner side. We want to be on those that are winning. How far does our fandom go? How far will our allegiance and loyalty go? Maybe a few losing seasons? Maybe a few, eh, if they're not doing good, maybe they'll give up after a few years. How far will our loyalty go? That question actually was part of the surveys done with moral development theory with Professor Jonathan Haidt. We've been talking about this the last few weeks in the episode election. And part of that question is on this of loyalty. Loyalty is low on the liberal side and high on the conservative side. But what he found when he dug in the evidence was rather interesting. Conservatives have strong loyalty and in-group feelings for country and nationality especially. Yeah, it makes sense. We are Americans and many Americans, we feel about pride and joy in claiming to be Americans. But on the liberal side, you found that loyalty in group was rather low, that many liberals would actually would prefer to have preference to all people or loyalty to all humans, not just those in our nationality or those our nation group, those within our country. And so this was a big separation. And this is one of the things why conservatives and liberals don't agree on things is because they see it differently. Conservatives will definitely pull for our country and pull for those identified within the group while liberals will pull for other people, not just those who identify in our country and those kinds of things. But it really got me thinking because one of the things that Professor Haight talked about with this moral development theory is the idea that we are naturally wired to form groups, loyalty, in-group feeling, identity in that group sense. This is one of the key things I pulled out from his talk about this from his books and his talks that this is really something that struck a chord of me because yes, I think this is true that we naturally form teams and groups. And he famously talked about that. Like even when we don't have anything to agree upon, we will form a group that we can agree with, whether it be for the football team, whether it be for a college, whether it be for identity of some form, we form natural identities and groups easily. We may not stop to think about, it. we may not stop to think, well, where is my identity? Who is my in-group? Obviously family, but how many? How far does our family extend out to? Our friends, yeah, but how many friends do you extend that out to? Our community, yeah, but how far do you extend that community out to? And how much of your identity is based upon that? That's a tough question for us to deal with. It makes us think, who am I loyal to? What formed my identity? What group am I in with? What group am I not in with? This is something that really got me thinking, I really thought was really interesting with his study, illustrating the difference between liberals and conservatives, those who vote in our country, and how we see the world. 
And I think it's worth talking about because I think part of this, and he identifies this, are churches. Churches naturally form part of our identity. <laughs> it's something we naturally gravitate towards. And it's not saying that's a bad thing. But we need to look at it and think carefully about this. Who is the church? Who is in and who is out? Who are we loyal to? Who are we not loyal to? This is something that really kind of got me thinking a lot as we've been gearing up and looking towards the sermon series about what did Jesus talk about and say and this moral development theory leading up to the election has really been something that I've been into and excited about researching and reading because it challenges what we think we know or challenge us how we reason, how we feel, how our logic might be with the church group. Obviously, we want a big welcome. We in the church, one of our main things with our vision is welcoming. The very first thing is welcoming, then worship, then inspiring and serving together. And so welcome is a big part of this. And so we as a church are significant, intentionally driven by this thing of saying, we are welcoming to all. But to all is who? where one interesting thing with this is you are part of this and you may not live in kansas city or you may not live in lee summit you may not live in the same time zone but you can be part of this church we could be church together there's some of the new and different the churches is starting to wrestle with and, and engage with and see about who is our church who is a member who is part of our community now that we can worship together online and across the country and around the globe it's rather interesting. And this leads some churches to talk about target audiences. Now, I'll say probably the most well-known case of target audience for churches is Saddleback Church in Orange County, California. They were very intentional about creating the ideal person, their target audience that they were the going for. The prayers of the people. They called him Saddleback Sam. And Saddleback Sam was a white guy in his 40s or 50s. He United was married, with he your had saints kids, he had a mortgage. And place, that was the ideal target for audience they were going world. for. So everything with Saddleback Church was aimed at this guy and his family. This target audience, this Saddleback Sam, God of time was the and key space. audience for who they were going Our for. Faith has been passed and this has drawn a lot of criticism because when you look at the church, you Bless realize, oh yeah, they, they've done a good job with this. In fact, of, they've really made a church geared for that person. You, that they but share what, what they have first people? received Lord, what about Saddleback Sam's mercy, mom or dad? Our prayer. Or what about when they get older, the grandkids? God of Tempest or what about people who don't fit in that category of Saddleback Sam? Is, is the church even for them? And brutal destruction. Who's our target audience? Protect us and I would all say your creatures from you, hurricanes, You are floods, here, you're watching, so I think you're obviously part of our target audience. Restore we don't have a Saddleback lost. Sam in this church. Um, Lord, in your mercy, part of this, One of the things I take a lot of pride and joy with our congregation is that we have God of truth. a wide range Raise of ages, demographics, with integrity, economic groups, honesty, all and these things. Compassion. Now we are very predominantly Unite white, and that's certainly true. And that goals obviously that reflects our community also, but we don't people. want to be exclusive to this. And that's the downside for justice, any of these things with target audiences because it becomes exclusive. Lord, in your mercy, it can easily become who's in and prayer. who's out. Who is the church for? Who is the church not God of for? Tumult? You in the second reading today, we hear about the disciples going out doing ministry things. Jesus commissioned them out. Jesus sends them out. Abide with and John comes all back and he's kind of whining a little bit. I kind of picture a little school, bit of a, a complaining in his voice. He says, Jesus, Bring there's these guys over who there who are not part of us. Reassure They're doing us stuff of your in your name, Jesus. The Make them stop it. Give us Lord, a cease and desist letter, Jesus. Your intellectual property of who is a Christian needs to be upheld and enforced. Who's in and who's out. And I love what Jesus says. God of tenderness. Jesus says, we whoever is not against us all who have died in is the faith. for us. Console Jesus is saying, if you're trying to draw a circle around, with the who's the in of eternal life That circle in has to be presence. very big. That Lord, circle has to be as big as you can because mercy, anyone who's not against us, our prayer. when he's saying people who will persecute, who will attack, who are against Accept the faith, these prayers, obviously those are people who are against God, Christ. And but those known only besides to you, those people, through Jesus everyone else Christ, is for us. Lord. So if you're not against oh, us, you're for us. And this phrase has been taken many Amen. different ways and different times, but I think the core of this shows the insider-outsider dynamic. That Jesus is saying, basically, like, they may not even know who I am yet, but yet they're open to teaching my name and trying to heal and do these things in my name. And so we should welcome them in and that they're not against us so they can be welcomed in as part of us. It's a remarkable teaching. Yet still, it doesn't stop us from thinking insider-outsider mentality. 
And so Jesus has to give another teaching and another one and another one about how we are including the other. Almost the entire gospel of, of Luke is dedicated to this. We're at the end tail of the year of Luke here, year C of the lectionary, and almost entirely dedicated to this question of who is inside and outside. Luke goes to great pains in the gospel to illustrate this. The fact of the poor, the sick, women, slaves, minorities, people who would oftentimes be ignored, the powerless, even the Roman soldiers, the people who were the oppressors are still welcomed into the church. Even they are welcomed by Christ. I think that's incredible. That's part of the power of the gospel is that when we draw the circle, who's in? Draw it big. Jesus says, draw that circle really big. In one of the parables we heard today in our gospel reading today, Jesus gave the parable of the wheat and the weeds. And part of this is about end times, but part of it is also just life. And he gives a parable where there was a field out and the farm was scattering wheat and it grew, but also the weeds grew up. And so should they rip out the wheat from the weeds or should they try to, you know, weed the garden, so to say? And the master who is God in this parable says, no, let them go up together. And basically at the harvest, we'll separate it out. Um, this parable of the wheat and the weeds illustrates something that's really helpful for us when we think about insider group and outside group and loyalty issues that we don't know. We don't know who other people are. Are they wheat or weeds? We all grew up together in the community. The kids grew up together. The kids go trick or treating together. You know, we had that this week. And so I think about like the neighborhood. My neighborhood really comes to life for Halloween. It goes kind of crazy, but it really comes to life. And so with those kids, I don't know who these kids are. I don't really know how their families are. I don't know what's in their heart. I don't know what they believe. But yet those kids and my kids all grew up together. My neighbors and I, we all live together in the neighborhood. We're neighbors. But it gives me a humility. It gives me a peace and humility because I don't have to know. Sadly, too often in church history, we see examples of this where churches will try to separate the wheat from the weeds. Who's welcome in our small circle of communion? The old model of this was when pastors would go around and give communion coins for people that they had inspected their lives and found them worthy of communion. Um, this is kind of an interesting thing in Protestant history. But if we think about it, in a different way, that really none of us are worthy of communion. I'm a sinner. I need communion because it's a means of grace. It's the body and blood of Christ. I need that. Am I worthy of it? No, of course not. I'm not worthy of my Savior. I'm not worthy of Jesus. But that illustrates that I need communion because I'm not worthy. And so this issue about the weeds and the wheat really is a good illustration for the church. It's a lesson we have to take seriously about who's in our in-group and who's in our out-group so we don't draw that circle too small and tiny because God obviously says that it's much bigger and we don't know what's in their hearts, we don't know their lives. It's, so it's easy for us to be judgmental and gatekeepers of this. And from the wheat and the weeds, even the warning is clear, but yet we still don't listen to that warning. And so we as Christians and church leaders and churches, we draw that circle small. And so we will often even think about heaven and salvation in a small circle. There's many jokes about this, about the idea about the pearly gates in heaven and Peter at the pearly gates or, you know, the many rooms in heaven. And they illustrate something about human nature. We want to make heaven small. We want to make heaven one room for only us. And we think only our church people are going to heaven. But if we take what Jesus says seriously about this in-group, out-group loyalty thing, we realize something. It's not the pearly gates. It's not the gatekeeper. Heaven is not one room, but rather heaven is a homecoming. Heaven is a gracious welcome to all who finally have come back to God after death. The welcome that God gave, the welcome that God rolled out through the cross and the resurrection, through those things, opens up that small circle from just a few to the whole world. That's an amazing part about this is that salvation is for all groups and all people. Jesus died for all. That circle cannot be too small then because it cannot be limited to who we think should be in, who we think are worthy, who we think are like us really is what it says, that subtle narcissism in there. But rather Christ died for all. And so salvation is a homecoming. And on this All Saints Day, we remember all those who went before us. And there are people in church history who I would probably not want to meet in heaven. 
they're saints of the church who I probably don't want to see there. But here's the thing. All saints reminds us that God's love is for all of us. About all those in our family who raised us, all those who showed us the faith, all those Sunday school teachers and pastors and kind neighbors and loving people in our lives who showed us what it was to be a true Christian in God's love to not draw a small circle. So I hope and pray that this day that we don't draw a small circle. That all saints reminds us that the circle for heaven is really large. That all the saints in heaven still cheer us on and lift us up and encourage us. That all the saints in the community of heaven are there singing at communion today. That all the saints are there cheering us on and lifting us up. And that's not a small circle. So I hope and pray that on this All Saints Sunday that we will remember all the saints who went before us. And that we too will be the saints to love others, to share God's grace, to encourage and share the gospel with others. That we may be that one day all the saints that they remember too. Let us share that and expand that circle. Make it big and wide for the kingdom of God. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. God of time and space, our faith has been passed down through the generations. Bless new believers, catechumens, and any affirming their faith in you, that they share what they have first received. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of tempest and tide, our world is full of dazzling beauty and brutal destruction. Protect us and all your creatures from hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and fires. Restore what has been lost. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of truth, raise up leaders with integrity, honesty, and compassion. Unite our elected officials in shared goals that benefit and serve all people. Instill in them hearts of justice, mercy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of tumult, you sustain and guide your people when the way forward is uncertain. Abide with all going through transitions at work, school, or in their personal lives. Bring healing to those who are sick. Reassure us of your constancy in the midst of change. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of tenderness, we give thanks for all who have died in the faith. Console our mourning spirits with the promise of eternal life in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, 
our duty and joy at all times and all places, to give thanks and praise to you, Almighty Father, through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by the glorious resurrection has opened the way of eternal life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to the heal of the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, gave disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us your spirit of love, O Lord, and unite all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. So I live my praise 
close to you Blessed are those who live themselves fully, with no doubt or hesitation, who know their sacred purpose like a hunger. Oak tree in her majesty, owl in her night knowing, stream in her quiet singing, marigolds with faces of joy. May the fireflies light your way in the darkness. May the morning glory spark gratitude for a new day. May the witness of feather and hoof, leaf and light, reveal to you what it means to be truly, wholly, fully yourself. Breaking open the sacred seed planted within Cherish the badger who ambles across earth, the raven painting the sky, the horse galloping over meadow. See how they spark your own longing to run or fly into the arms of yourself, to know your name, the one that has always been etched in your heart from the very first moment. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time on Sunday morning or any time during the week to connect to God here through worship. We appreciate you being here, your support, your prayers, your dedication to the church. Thank you for this. Now, a few announcements for you today. First, obviously, it's the start of November. We have a new Ministry of the Month. And with the Ministry of the Month, it is the Lee Summit Social Services, and the Metro Lutheran Ministry Christmas Tours. Also, we had from Janice Krantz, she brought bags in for us for the Thanksgiving meal and Christmas meal for Lee Summit Social Services. So if you want to put food in the bag, bring those things, or if you want to drop off food items for Thanksgiving, you know, typical mashed potatoes, gravy, you know, those kind of things would be great. Or if you just want to do a gift card, also that's great. And she asked for gift cards for the turkey and ham and eggs and milk, those kinds of things. So you can bring those gift cards or those food items to the church if you like, or send those in. And so with that also is the Christmas stores 
for those places as well. So we celebrate, we lift that up. We'll be having a Christmas tree up here in the narthex. This is one of our big things for the year that we really want to get behind and support. Now, for those who may have been curious, for our last Ministry of the Month for October with the Veterans Community Project, yes, we met our matching gift. We met our goal. We raised over $3,000, and it's a joy and celebration when we do that and lift that up. What a great thing. So thank you so much for all those who contributed, who stepped up, who helped with that gift. So thank you so much for that. Also coming up, we have a few things coming up, including in, later on in November, we'll have the Community Thanksgiving Service. And that will be on November 20th that the Episcopal Church, St. Paul's Episcopal Church in the Summit here at 7 p.m. The Chiefs game might be a little bit, you know, run a little late, but I think we'll be okay, though, because we have the late game for the Chiefs on that Sunday. We already checked. But uh, the Thanksgiving service and our choir will be singing with the other choirs in town for a joint choir service with that. So it's exciting. It's wonderful. So we are supporters, one of the founding charter members of the Minister Alliance. And so we come together for this Thanksgiving service coming up. We hope you have a blessed week. Remember all the saints went before you. Light a candle today, say a prayer, have a memory, show a photo. Remember all the saints who went before us, who tossed the faith, who showed the faith. And with that, may we go out and live the faith. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.